Deep under the Welsh countryside, a team of engineers is racing against time. Working 24 hours a day, they know one wrong move could leave more than a million people without water. There's a bit of nervousness because um, you can do all the surveying and measurements and all that kind of stuff, but until you actually break through and see it uh, coming through, you don't know exactly what it's going to be. But if all goes well, no one will ever even know they were here. The story of our engineers starts here, the Elam Valley Reservoir in Mid Wales, a spectacular chain of five artificial lakes that supply all of Birmingham's water. This is one of my favourite places, and not just because it's really beautiful, but because Elan represents Victorian engineering at its most ambitious and extraordinary. The Victorians dammed and flooded two Welsh valleys and built a 73-mile aqueduct to bring all that water to Birmingham. Well, it was a mammoth feat of engineering, you know, to take water all the way from the Wales of Wales to Birmingham. It's incredible. But over a century later, that aqueduct, that pipeline, is showing its age. In parts, it's cracking and it needs fixing. And this is the heart of a £300 million repair effort. Meet Nantmel Supermole, a massive tunnel boring machine creating brand new chunks of aqueduct. It's important work, and this team have to get it right. Make a mistake, and the water supply in every household, school, and hospital stops. All that water from Wales ends up here, in a reservoir in Birmingham. So Sarah, this is Birmingham's water from Elan. How important is the Elan Valley Aqueduct to the city? It's incredibly important. I mean, Birmingham is the second biggest city in the UK and we need to make sure that we've got enough water to give people to use every day. And this is, this is it, this is the only supply? This is it, this is the only supply of water into Birmingham. This reservoir contains five days of water for the city of Birmingham and when they're working on the Elan Valley Aqueduct, this is the only water supply for the entire city but they don't get five days to actually work on the aqueduct itself because it takes a day to drain it and another day to fill it back up again. So they can only work on it in the three day period in the middle. But some repairs need more than three days to fix. So instead, the super mole will be tunneling around the problem, building brand new sections of aqueduct. Supermole weighs 150 tonnes and is 120 metres long. At the moment, it's drilling its second new piece of aqueduct, ready to bring water from Wales to Birmingham. Deep underground, this vital work never stops. It's a 24-hour operation, five days a week, so the crews go down there for a 12-hour shift. Once they go down at 7 o'clock in the morning or 7 o'clock at night, they stay there until the other 7 o'clock. But what's it actually like to work on the super mole? It's not just noisy, it's wet and a very tight squeeze. We're 18 metres underground and in places I can't even stand up. As the machine digs and moves forward, new walls are slotted into place. All that soil and rock they dig out, tonnes of it, is taken away by train. It's a real team effort and the driver of the super mole soon lets people know if someone's letting the team down. The drivers, they've got a hole in the front and when, when, I, when I go too slow, the horn starts going. So all the boys know it's me at the back. There's no nipping back up to the surface for a break, so super mole has everything you need. 12 hours a day down here, we have a cup of tea in the back and we've got a microwave and a little canteen area. I'd have to ask, is there a toilet? I haven't seen one. There is a toilet, it's further back on the, uh, the machine. There's uh, like a little makeshift toilet in there, but you tend to want to stay away from it if possible. Like, don't drink too much tea. <laughs> tea is one thing the Super Mole crew have in common with the Victorians, but otherwise Super Mole couldn't be more different to the picks and shovels used a hundred years ago. Still, our modern engineers are hugely impressed by the Victorian handiwork. The more you investigate it, the more you look at it, the more um, admiration you have got. I mean, they've done what they've done 
without all our modern technology and, and it's quite incredible. And the quality, the, 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 even the kind of brick lining and everything like that is, is, is near perfect. So uh, yeah, it was a lot of workmanship went into it and a lot of pride as well, it's quite, quite evident. At the end of the 19th century, Birmingham and its population was booming, but it needed a clean, safe water supply. And it was about to get one, thanks to an ingenious Victorian engineer. Well, it was the vision of a gentleman by the name of James Manser. He had the vision of taking this water from Wales all the way to Birmingham. Work on Manser's idea started in 1892. It took 12 years, 50,000 people, and the aqueduct alone used 16 and a half million bricks. And this extraordinary achievement is still quenching Birmingham's thirst because its capacity has grown as the city has grown. The Victorians put the infrastructure in place for us to allow us to do that. So their foresight was wonderful. They knew that it was going to get bigger and bigger. A few miles from Elan, today is a big day for the tunnelling team following in Mansa's footsteps. So under that concrete is the original Victorian aqueduct, the pipeline that brings all the water from Elan Valley to Birmingham. And then the new section is down through that tunnel there, a kilometre long. And at the other end is the 120 metre long tunnel boring machine. And today it breaks back through to the surface after four months underground. And I'm in the gear because I'm going to be on it when it does. It's amazing to think that very soon the water for my morning coffee will be making this same journey just in the other direction. On the surface, they're waiting to catch the big moment. And waiting. And waiting. And suddenly, we're through. Back inside, it's time to leave Nantmel's supermole behind. But getting out means climbing through the machine's massive drill face, the part that's just spent four months grinding through rock. This is all a little unnerving. <laughs> oh. Oh. You get a sense of how big it is when you climb through it. It's enormous. Nantmel Supermole is on target to finish all its work in time for a pretty special anniversary. So the original aqueduct was opened on the 21st of July in 1904 and we're hoping that we can get everything done and reopened on the, the new parts of the tunnel 115 years to the day. So many of us rely on Victorian engineering every single day in our lives and yet we really don't give it a second thought. But as it gets older, well then we have to turn to 21st century engineering to keep it all going. They really are unsung heroes. Two teams, a hundred years apart, keeping the taps on in Birmingham. <laughs>